right now I pretty much just do what's enjoyable to her. So things like this sneak in a little bit of learning without it being a chore for her. Hey everybody, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor lawyer turned homeschool mom of three kids ages nine, six, and four. If you're interested in videos about secular homeschooling, raising a child with ADHD, and living a more meaningful, essentialist type of lifestyle, please remember to hit the subscribe button. In this video, I'll be sharing my homeschooling favorites. Now, I used to do these way back when, but I sort of fell off the wagon with them, and I just wanna get back into it because I think sharing what we've been using, what my kids have been enjoying for the last month, it's really helpful because we as homeschool parents can sometimes buy a lot of unnecessary educational items or things that turn out to be a bust. So I think when we all share with each other what has been working, that can sort of guide our purchases in a more productive way. Um, I definitely try not to share anything that we have not enjoyed. I do do some sponsored videos. I do accept products for review. When I do, I make sure to let you know. Honestly, YouTube doesn't make like a significant amount of income for me, so I have no monetary reason to mislead you in any way. So that disclaimer out of the way, I'm just gonna share what I have here in front of me. So I just went through the house and gathered up what my kids have recently been using. I do do a somewhat toy rotation type of system where, especially for educational toys, every week I bring out a new array and then I clean out the ones that either they've been playing with way too much or they haven't been playing with at all. I take the ones they haven't been playing with at all and really consider whether we need to keep these, whether they're developmentally appropriate right now or they might be later or whether we're just done with that and we can donate it. The ones that they've been playing with a lot, I like to put away and rotate so that it's fresh again, so that they don't have them out for the entire month and sort of lose interest or get from beginning to end of something. Um, so if you haven't tried a toy rotation system, particularly with educational items, I recommend it because it's super easy. I just put them all into a bin in the garage and you know, put it away. I try to put the puzzles with the puzzles, et cetera, et cetera. But I know some friends who just put in like, this was January and then they put it away for a couple months. Now, without any further ado, I'll get into what we have been enjoying. Our kids love playing Spot It. All three of them, the nine-year-old, the six-year-old, and the four-year-old, I really enjoy playing games that the four-year-old can play without throwing a total like hissy fit because she is very strong-willed and <laughs> if she, we are playing a game that she cannot be a part of, it becomes really stressful for her and then for the rest of us, the game becomes not so fun. So Spotted is one of those games that even I enjoy. So any age can really like get something out of it. We have been playing the regular standard version of Spotted as well as the target versions of, I think, like it'll be like find that person or find that animal, but they're the same concept. The recent one we just opened is the Sophia the First Spot It because she really likes Sophia the First. And this one also has the alphabet. So there's Spot It's with just pictures. I think the original one for kids just has pictures, but I like the idea of incorporating the alphabet. I have another one with numbers because um, that way she gets a little bit of extra practice. It helps her remember like that a W is a W and an M is an M, those kinds of concepts. Like if you put a line under a letter, that's the way it orients. I also like that because the letters are in all different directions, if you can see on the cards, they get an idea of like being able to identify a letter even if it's upside down. So I am not pushing my four-year-old at all. She is coming along nicely. She goes to Montessori preschool three days a week in the mornings just for, you know, so nine hours a week. She's four, uh, not four and a half yet, but she does not read yet, and my eldest at four had already taught himself how to read without me doing anything. So my middle child was coming along a little bit slower. Now she's reading just fine at the age of six. So I am not pushing my four-year-old at all. We'll continue to do these activities. We'll continue working on phonics, etc. But I'm pretty casual about stuff like this when they're four. When she's five, a little more formally pre-KK, We'll start doing some more like formal stuff but right now i pretty much just do what's enjoyable to her so things like this sneak in a little bit of learning without it being a chore for her next we have something that has been amusing my children every single day since christmas day when they got to open these and these are plus plus blocks now I, now i got these for 50 percent off from timber doodle in exchange for my honest review and i'm telling you i would have bought them for full price and i probably will buy another kit because my kids are the type that when they build things, they like to save them for a while, and so they run out of blocks to build things. 
When you get the original box of Plus Plus things, they don't come in this plastic kit. They come in this cardboard box, which I have somewhere in the house. But I put them all in this little bin that they can open. And the bin was pretty much full. So you can see a whole bunch of Plus Plus blocks here. And I don't want to drop it because they're kind of small. But the blocks link together to form either flat or three-dimensional structures. So this is a little house with a chimney that my four-year-old was building and there's other things like this like shape and stuff like that I don't know exactly what this is I think it's supposed to be a transformer head that attached to a body somewhere else and here's like an arm um, but the kids have been having a great time playing with them they so each of the pieces is shaped like this tiny little hashtag symbol and they link together just by pressure so you just put one little edge of it into another and then they link together like so and the kids have just been having a great time because you can build a flat pattern like this or you can fold them up and start creating a three-dimensional structure like so. So the kids have been having a great time. My son has been building all sorts of action figures and robots and things like that. My girls have been building houses and dogs and everything else under the sun. The kit comes with a little handout that shows you even more things that you can build with them. But the kids have been having an amazing, amazing time with them. And you know, I gotta say, this is one of those random toys where I didn't think it was gonna be as big of a hit as it was, but I think it's, it provides them with the same fine motor like practice that Legos do without nearly as much difficulty. So my four-year-old likes these way better than regular size Legos. And so does my daughter. So they've just been building away happily. Sometimes they build just flat, like patterns, like mosaic tile patterns. Other times they just fold them up. The nice thing about that is if you have a kid who's still building the flat patterns, they can just take the edges and just shift them slightly into like a box and then they realize organically that flat shapes become three-dimensional shapes and the idea of faces and vertices and everything is really easy to see here, which I think is interesting. So as you can see from our tray and all the other little sculptures they have littered around the house, my kids have been really enjoying it. So if you're interested in getting that for your kids, go over to timberdoodle.com and check out the um, full description. Next up are these Arteza Real Brush Pens. These were on a lightning deal a few months ago on Amazon, and I see them periodically come up as a lightning deal. So definitely don't just buy them off the cuff, like put them in your cart or something and then just sort of put an alert on it or something. So it comes with 48 of them and they come in these little stacked trays and I just have the kids put them back in the trays when they're done. So one in, one out. But the color range is really, really beautiful. If you can see, there's the blues and the greens, the yellows and the oranges, and the pinks and the purples. And the beauty of this is, it also comes with a watercolor brush, by the way, which is nice. But the beauty of it is they are truly like watercolor pens. So if you are painting on a watercolor type of paper that's already been pre-wet, you get that watercolor effect, which is really, really fun. And the colors are really beautiful. Um, my kids have been having a really good time with them. They keep asking for them. So the way we use art materials is basically that I rotate them out also. But if they want a particular material, I'm happy to get it for them. And These they've asked for so often that I've just added them to our regular basket. Another thing we've really been enjoying is this pin the uh, horn on the unicorn that I got from the Target dollar spot. And it's just this like felt unicorn that you can you know tape up to your window. I tape it up with a little bit of packing tape or, or paint tape. And then there's all these little horns that have a little Velcro on the back, which I find to be really helpful because it sticks to the, the felt much better. And I just shoved an old scarf in the bag as well so that we could always have it as the, the, the blindfold. So it's been super fun. I mean, it's really nice to have these silly little games on hand if you don't have any. Again, just pick some up. I think Target Dollar Spot is great for this type of game, just to lighten the mood, you know? Do your math play pin the horn on the unicorn, go outside, do some English, eat some lunch, you know, like keep it loose. Next up, we have this little game that I keep in a pencil case because we actually bought this from a thrift store. So I never had the original box. I think it came in a baggie, but it is a Melissa and Doug game and it's a matching spinning game. So, but when you pop it, it spins the thing and you have a number and you have these cards, these farm cards, which are all like barnyard memory cards. 
and you put them out like memory style face down but then depending on what you spin you get to flip over that number of cards so the child gets to practice simple counting as well as memory at the same time and again this makes it really fun and interesting so it's just a nice way to like spruce up your memory game if you have memory cards already that's a good way of doing it like pull out a spinner from another game and play memory with like you know a different number of of cards that you can flip over. You could even do that with dice. So you don't have to buy exactly this game. You can kind of incorporate that concept with what you already have on hand. Another thing we have been loving recently are these stencils. This is just a pack of drawing stencils. I think the company is Creative Elf. I'll see if I can find this on Amazon to link, but I mean, sure, any stencils that you find would be good. I like these because they come in this sturdy little suitcase-like thing that the kids can carry around the house. And it came with drawing paper and a pack of stencils, 20 different stencil sheets. So they have everything from like animals to star shapes to horses and spaceships and astronauts, etc. So they're really nice and sturdy. I think sometimes the thing with stencil kits is that they can be made out of cardstock, which I don't feel like are really worth the money because they don't last that long and they don't produce those precise edges. These are a really sturdy plastic, so I hope I can find them to link down below for you. Stencils, I think, are one of those things that last for a really long time. This is like one of those open-ended toys that they can use to make stories with. Your kids who don't feel as confident with their drawing skills can use them. So we've just gotten a lot of play out of these. So as far as toys go, now that I'm a mom of three at the other end of things, I definitely can see all the toys that I had bought that didn't get very much play and also all the toys that did surprisingly so sometimes so stencils were definitely one of those I mean I would think that you would play with them a few times and you'd be done but these get used at least once a week by at least one child another favorite this month has been this page a week art calendar now I really like one the size of it but also the idea of having one art piece up a week now we generally use our Osborne art cards and we rotate them in like this plexiglass kind of, you know, business flyer holder. Um, life gets a little busy, however, sometimes I forget. So I like the idea of a weekly calendar just propped up on our window for everybody to see. Now the weeks run from Sunday all the way to Saturday and you have a whole variety of art pieces. So the one we're looking at right now is this one. I like that they're not all Western pieces. So this, for example, is the Sultana uh, Rezia of Delhi on her horse. And then you'll have more, more Western pieces like the Cezanne. The way that the calendar is organized, you have 26 weeks that flip over. And then when you get to the end of that, you actually use the other side. So for example, here you have February, but on this side, you have December. So when you flip over the calendar and go back, you'll have December. And so you have a Monet here. And then you have all the classics that we know too. Or not all of them, but some of them. This Vermeer. And you have a page for notes here if you wanted to add any notes. But I don't expect to write on this calendar at all. I really like that the prints are this large. Because when we finish using the calendar for this year, I still expect to keep it. And then probably just use it for like, you know, art display later on. One nice feature of the calendar is that the very two final pages are these tiny little thumbnails of all the week's art. And I might actually just jot these down so that if we are studying that particular artist, I will know that their art print is in here and we can display it just for like a, an art study. An oldie but a goodie are Mad Libs. I find that if my kids are melting down or if there's a little bit of angst between some of them especially, Mad Libs always brings everybody together because it just, lightens the mood and everybody laughs and it's an easy way of practicing your adjectives nouns you know different parts of speech mad libs jr is formatted a little bit differently than the others in that for example right here you can see this page gives you different ideas for the nouns adjectives verbs and miscellaneous words and then when you go here they have symbols here so that the kids could fill them in if they wanted to we never actually fill these out we just uh do it verbally i'll just count ahead and and figure out how many adjectives I need how many nouns I need and then I'll just switch between the kids like can you give me a noun can you give me an adjective can you give me a body part the body part ones I usually leave for the four-year-old because she can do those pretty easily and then I just read them aloud and we have a chalkboard table so the kids will sometimes help me out by writing down their choices and then shouting out the word to fill in the sentence and it's just hilarity 
Um, Mad Libs actually has a free app that you can download also that we sometimes play when we're stuck in line or stuff. It's really nice. It works out really well. And I believe the free version has something like 30 puzzles. So we haven't gone through all of those because I just reserve them for when we are stuck and I have nothing else to entertain them but my phone. This is a little kit that I picked up off Facebook. A mom was selling it in one of those buy sell groups. And this is based on those little Kava blocks. We have a whole bin of them. I think we have like 100 or 200 or something. But these are the Brain Builders Junior little kit. It only comes with 20 planks. But the nice thing about this is that one, it's super contained. It's in this. And there's also cards in here with little puzzles. And the puzzles are numbered in order of difficulty. But I really like the fact that they get to practice the different shapes different styles of using the blocks for three-dimensional objects as well as like patterns so like here you have the snake you have triangles here you have 13 triangles um, all sorts of things here you have a sun there's also some number practice with a two etc and i like the idea of my four-year-old especially being able to amuse herself with this pack because she understands what the puzzles mean and she understands how she she can do it on her own and it's just a little like self-learning tool but all the kids have enjoyed playing with it so you know it's a nice little compact toy to have on hand last but not least is our abacus if you don't have an abacus i suggest you get one this one is from learning resources but i'm sure any old abacus will do i know there's those other abacuses that have like five red beads and five white beads and they're all like that to illustrate the fives i don't really um know which ones are better than others but i know that having one has really changed how my kids enjoy math and how they visually can see addition etc my son goes to a montessori blended homeschool two days a week and they teach them dynamic multiplication etc where like these will stand for ones these will stand for tens and so on and so forth and um, that was something I never learned how to do. So he's actually taught me better uses of an abacus, which has been fun for me. But yeah, I really like this for every age group from just learning how to count, like this is one, this is two, this is three. Can you show me three blocks on every single color? Two more complicated things like if you have five blocks, how many more do you need to make 10? Five more. I just think it's a great, great toy to have on hand. This one from Learning Resources is nice because you can also do color practice at the same time. But I think sensorially, it's just a great learning tool to have on hand and something that they could use for years and years. So those are my homeschooling favorites for January, you guys. I would love to hear about what you guys have been enjoying in your homeschool, if there's any products that, you know, have really like changed different subjects for your kids or really captivated their interest. I would love to know. As always, I appreciate your time and thank you so much for watching me. I wish you the very best day.